What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for returning. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for watching me. So I'm just going to stop rambling because I'm on a time crunch. I have sorry to be in like an hour. So please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see what this video is about, just keep on watching. Okay guys, so um, yeah, the elephant in the room, I've been MIA for a month. Uh, I said in my last video that, bro, last month, April, was a really emotional month for me and I just didn't want to fake being happy, come online and smile and give fake laughs and all of that. I did not want to do any of that. So I decided to take April off. For those of you who don't know, I lost my brother and... April was his birth month and it was a very emotional it was like this the month of April was like this for me and my family it's not even a joke but we're in therapy and I'm doing a lot better now um yeah it's I'm just taking it one day at a time guys so that is where I have been I'm trying to take care of myself trying to do things I used to do prior to my loss so yeah um i'm slowly but surely getting back there and yeah thank you so much for your patience and your love so anyway this video has been the most my most requested video i'm not even going to lie every single person that texts me oh how did you do your study visa how did you do your study visa i'm here to talk about it okay i'm here to tell you the deets and all the details and everything on how to get successfully keyword successfully get a Canadian study permit and a study visa so um yeah if you want to know the details keep on watching if you know someone who needs help kindly share this video please support me guys uh, I'm trying to hit a goal before the year runs out I'm, I'm gonna be more consistent no more excuses okay no more excuses okay okay so I'm gonna be giving you videos hopefully uh, leave suggestions email me DM me my handles on the screen so yeah, let's just get right into the video because I'm on a time crunch. Like I said, I have to be somewhere very soon. Okay? Okay guys, so I see you decided to stay. And for you to be here, it means you want to know how to successfully get your Canadian study visa. So first of all, congratulations on your admission. I know that was hard. I know it was a long wait, but you made it through. Congratulations. So that's the first step. Um, so now you should be thinking about getting your study permit. I'm going to be talking about Ukraine slash Europe because that was where I applied from. But I think it's a similar situation. The only difference is... Nigeria takes a longer wait time. So Ukraine was very fast, but Nigeria takes a longer wait time. But the documents are still the same, okay? So I think I have one more or two more videos in this Canada series and I can put it behind me and start filming lifestyle stuff, show you around Alberta, show you around Edmonton, show you my life as a queer person, all of that. Take you around on my trips next month is pride month i'll be going to toronto like i have so many things planned so i just want to get like my series of the canada immigration done and then i would you know start like my regular lifestyle update and everything so yeah um i think you're all cut up so let's get right into the video <laughs> um okay so first things first <sighs> i'm gonna give you a list of documents you need and then i would go into details of what and what and what you would need in each category if that makes sense you could always get the comprehensive list from the description box below so yeah let me just stop around here and get right into the video so for my study permit um the first thing i did was get my documents in order right so when you go on ircc or canada.ca you're gonna go down to immigration and citizenship i'm gonna leave something on the screen so you can see what it looks like so you're gonna go to canada.ca and go straight to immigration and citizenship 
click there and then you click on sign in to my account and then it will take you to a page where you have to create your account you answer a series of questions to see if you're eligible to apply for a study uh, permit and a study visa and then when you get through and then you would now arrive at a page where you would see the list of things required for you to upload now that list is not a comprehensive list I and mean, even when you go to the page they're just gonna give you like four or five documents that they need it's never enough Canadian visa is quite different from the rest because you have to fully convince your visa officer that you deserve <laughs> you deserve the study visa even if you have an admission there are people who have admissions and have paid school fees and they were still rejected multiple times it is a common thing for a Canadian study permit it's like one of the hardest everyone's hearts used to do jib 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 when they have to apply so I'm here to give you the details because my own time no there was no one video with every single detail inside everyone was just gatekeeping information so I had to go on a deep dive on my own from various sources so I'm saving you the stress and I'm gonna put it all in one video okay so step one I already told you have to create your account with um, IRCC and you would see a list of stuff there. I'm just gonna list them out. So from the IRCC side, these are the things you would need. You have to fill about three forms. One is called an application for a study permit outside Canada. I just have a list that I'm reading from. A study permit outside Canada. So you have to fill that form and you have to fill it very carefully. Please fill it correctly. Try not to make any mistakes. Go over it like three or four times before you submit it. And in order for you to fill all of these forms, you have to have Adobe. So download Adobe, the latest version of Adobe, install it on your Google Chrome and you'll be good. So that's the first form you fill. The second form you're going to fill is a family information form. Here you're going to talk about your family members and all of those if I remember correctly. You have to fill it out as well. Try to make no mistakes too. The next form you will need is an uh, application for a temporary resident visa made outside Canada. That is another form. Those are the three forms I know I filled. Aside my medical form, but those are the three main forms I filled and Yeah, you have to use Adobe to fill those so you have to be really careful with it. Make sure your information is correct Don't lie Don't forge your documents. Don't forge anything because if they find out you will be banned So be as truthful as possible. So those are the things that they're gonna give you So now I'm gonna give you my own list of documents that I used and I have used for my clients that was successful for them okay okay so for me i split my documents into three right three major categories proof of funds uh, my statement of interest my motivation letter my statement of purpose whatever and my uh, international documents so i'm gonna go step by step on what and what you need in each category my international place there's a place on the site where you have to upload your international passport so I created a, a PDF file and in my PDF file I had scanned copies of all my passports both expired and current was in there I had my post car in there well I'm a permanent resident of Ukraine so my PR was in there um, and I had my visa stamps of every country I have visited every visa I have had every single thing that required me to have my passport stamped my travel stamps were in there and I'm going to tell you the reason why you need your your travel stamps you uh, providing those travel stamps basically basically tells them that oh this person travels a lot and they are trusted in other countries they are a legal person and they follow the rules of other countries and it also gives you like it gives them the backing that okay when your study visa is up you'll be a law you'll be a law by this citizen it's not a fact but i don't know why they think like that but yeah if you live outside nigeria like if you're a nigerian or you if you live outside your country of residence having a travel history especially back to your country of residence is good it's a plus but if you don't have it that's fine i'm going to explain how you can prove why you don't have it but if you do have it every single visa you've had even Going back to Nigeria, every single stamp, every single time you have gotten a visa, every single time you have traveled, every single thing, make a scan copy and put it in there. For those of you with an iPhone, I'm going to tell you how you can make scan copies on your phone. It's quite easy because that was what I did. I 
didn't spend money like that because again moving to Canada is expensive so you don't want to really spend too much money on scanning and scanning and scanning so you go to your notes on your phone and then you create like new notes you go to new notes right and then the camera icon you click that and then you see scan documents and that is how you can scan your documents and upload it to your Microsoft Word Microsoft Docs whatever you're using my passport number one was in there current passport and then there was a section for expired passports and then I went to the next category and I put my PR there and I put my actually I actually put my expired post videos I don't know if it was important but I uploaded it anyway because I had uh, scanned copies of them in my phone because I always scan my documents so I put my expired post videos and I put my PR card as well then I went to the next section and I talked about every single visa I have what kind of visa they are with the validity when it was issued when it expires all of those I just typed it out and explained it all of them and then I went to the next section and I put history my travel history every single time i have traveled what day when where how flight c bus i put everything in there and then i went to the picture side where i uploaded all my visa stamps all my travel stamps and all of those so that is my international file that was what i uploaded in the space given for international document international passport to upload it so that was the file my next file was my proof of funds so this is the number one reason why people would be rejected for a study visa is you do not have enough money in your account to prove that you could take care of yourself while being in Canada for at least one year. So for me, I am doing thesis research and I'm fully funded. So I am covered. If you're doing research, kudos to you. Your proof of funds is covered. But if you are not doing a thesis program, there are two things you need to do. First, you need to have paid your tuition for at least one year. Now, when you pay your tuition, you get a teller. When you get your teller, or you, you get a receipt, right? When you get your receipt, you scan it as well. So this will be where in the second file now, which is called the proof of funds file. So you scan your teller and make sure you have headings, maybe appendix 1A, uh, school fees, teller, uh, whatever. Then you scan it and put it there that you have paid your school fees. The second thing you need to do is have at least 10,000 Canadian dollars in an active account. I'm not saying you go and open an account and put 10,000 Canadian dollars inside, my dear. They will not answer you. You need an active account that has money actively going in and out of the account. The account needs to be in use, it needs to be active, even if you're not using it every time, but at least there should be some history in the account. And you, even if you have an active account, please do not, I repeat, do not go and put $10,000 all at once into the account. Don't do that. So you can spread it out over a couple of months or a couple of weeks. I don't know. Me, I had the money was already in accounts already. Like I said, I'm doing thesis and I'm fully funded. So I could easily get, if you're fully funded, I would explain that to you. For This, this, is, this is for people who are course based and are paying school fees. So make sure the account has more than or minimum ten thousand dollars if you have more good if you have less than ten thousand dollars i would not advise you to use that bank statement to apply or if the account doesn't have up to that but you have multiple accounts you could use multiple bank statements because i have four accounts my mom has two accounts and yeah we use multiple accounts for the proof of funds it's just gonna take up more space but yeah you could use multiple accounts to add up the money into that ten thousand dollars or more so that is the main thing you need to do if you if you're just one person if you're going with a sibling is double so each person has to have at least ten thousand dollars to take care of themselves because Canada is really expensive and the ten thousand dollars you would actually spend more for your accommodation and feeding and everything once you move here because it's really expensive depending on the province you go to so yeah you have to have that on check so that is for people who are in court space. So for those of you who are fully funded, you don't have an issue. You just need two letters. One from your supervisor stating how much they are giving to you every year and for how many years it will be valid for. Signed by your supervisor. That's the first letter you need. The second letter you need is a letter from the school stating that you will be funded by your supervisor. And it should be signed by your school or your department. 
so that are the two letters I got and those are the two letters you would need so have them scanned out to you and you can upload it as your proof of front so on a normal situation that would be enough but for me being a perfectionist I decided to add personal bank statements so I added every single account I owned because I was working at that time and I had some money saved here and there. And if someone is sponsoring you, if you're not paying your school fees yourself, if you're being sponsored by a family member or whatever, make sure you have the same last name as the person. Please don't go to a great great aunt Roach's dog's niece and ask them to give you a bank statement. They will bounce you. The person has to be your parents or your sibling a close relative to you they have to have the same last name as you so that is really important if, you, if someone is sponsoring you or whatever for friends you also need a letter of financial uh support they need to also notarize that saying that they go they're gonna pay your school fees they're gonna send you money monthly or till you get a job or whatever they need to stay that and notarize it too that's important so now we're going into the nitty-gritty the main the main 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 uh, document which is your i called it a motivation letter document but i had other documents inside because if you apply if when you go online you see that you have only limited spaces to upload stuff so there's a place called client information and that is where i uploaded my sop so in my sop after i had written my sop at the first half of it and then I entered the second section, which I labeled documents, and then I uploaded every other document I'm going to list out for you. This video is long, man. Okay, so for my personal document, um, let's start with doc. First of all, your SOP. I'm going to make a separate video on what and how to like organize your statement of interest because that is the only link between you and your visa officer. That is the only way you can express yourself to your visa officer. So if you mess it up, well, I don't know. So after you write your SOP, then you give your thanks, whatever, and then you start a new page. In the same file, you start a new page and you call it the document section. That was what I called my document section. So I was listing mine according to appendix, appendix 1A, 1B, 1C, whatever. So my appendix 1A was my land, family land and house documents. So every single land your family has, wherever they have houses, wherever they have property, get information from your sponsor or your parents and put it in there. This would help you if you're not in Nigeria. It will help prove your ties to home country. So that is very important. That's one of the ways you can prove your ties to home country. There are multiple ways, but that's one of the ways you can prove your ties to home country. When you do your police report from Nigeria, because I did two police reports, one from Nigeria and one from Ukraine. So when you do your police report from Nigeria, make sure you request an affidavit of certified home address. So that will certify with your picture and everything that this is your home address. That is another strong tie to home country. So my first uh, appendix was my land and our family houses. And then um, the second place was uh, another way to prove my tie to home country. I got my uncle who owns a hospital and he typed out a standing job offer letter for me. So in this, if you could have someone to give you a standing letter saying that when you're done with school, you have a job waiting for you. So that is another strong way to prove your ties. So you can either, your parents can either gift you land in your name or if you have a land in your name, that's good. Your affidavit of certified home address, that is another way. And third is job offer i provided all three but one is okay so those are the three ways you can prove your ties to home country uh the next thing i did was my police report like i said i did two police reports one from ukraine and one from nigeria and all these documents have to be notarized please don't forget take it to a notary and notarize everything because if it's not notarized it is not legal in the eyes of canada so when you get your documents you take it for notarization and you upload the document and the notarized stamp and everything side by side and then my birth certificate i uploaded it there as well uh you don't need to because your birth certificate is certified already right if you lost your birth certificate that's okay you could simply go to the court and swear an affidavit and they would give you an affidavit of birth or something like that from national commission so you can get it's easy to do that from Nigeria um, that's another tie to home country too so those are four four things you have to tie you back home I also got um, my mom to write me an affidavit of accountability and in this letter 
she simply states that she will be responsible for me being here that she, she your, your parents should basically buff you up say you're a good child blah 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 and the important thing is that they need to state that after you are done with your studies they would personally buy you a ticket to return back to nigeria they need to state that in the in the accountability that they will hold you accountable for everything you're not going to be a nuisance you're not going to be a problem so you need to do that and they need to notarize that as well then i went straight to my school documentation so i uploaded my wayek my transcripts of my medical school my diploma from medical school i also got recommendation letters from school from associations african medical students association nigerian medical students association i had a lot of references i just put them in there so if you can get people to give you references that would be good just talking about how good of a person you are like backing up your character and everything okay so that is it for my documents right then i went to a, my family section so after you upload everything about you you go to the next page and you put family section now in the family section you upload passport and data pages of everyone in your family um, birth certificates of everyone in your family national id of your parents or whoever is sponsoring you national id um travel details visas if they have any employment details of your sponsor and a tax clearance of your sponsor so those are the documents you need in the family section yeah another advice i would give to you is to do your medicals upfront what does that mean it means there's a there's a place on ircc where you can request for upfront medicals and then they'll give you a form and give you the steps on how to get your medicals booked when you do that give your paper I'll, i don't know if i can leave a sample i'll leave a sample here if i find any you have a sample that a paper that you have done your medicals and the results will be sent to IRCC. So that that paper they give you, please scan it and keep. Make a new file on its own and put it because there's a place to upload your medical documents there as well. So you can state that you, you opted for upfront medicals. That the reason that is good is it would save you time. It will save you wait time. Especially when the process is so long in Nigeria, do your upfront medicals. And then you also have there's a place for you to upload your digital photo so there are dimensions there i don't remember but they will tell you the specific size and everything even when you go to the photographer they will ask you like is it for canada visa is it for us visa is it for uk visa they will ask you so you just tell them canada and they will know the specific dimensions don't bother taking it in hard copy because you're you're applying online so just ask go with your flash card and ask them to put it in there for you you can have copies if you want but ask for it on a flash so it to be clear then when you ask for it on a flash you can also transfer it to a pdf file name and label it digital photo that's it so yeah now we'll be going into cost right this is the second and last half of the video the cost of everything so my medicals i paid about 6,600 grievance at that time you would have someone they talked with me on Viber I don't know why for me and then you have to also pay for the study permit itself the study permit itself costs 150 Canadian dollars and you also have to pay for something called biometrics cost $85 so altogether is $235 so budget $600 for the whole of this process it is not cheap like I said so just budget $600 down for your transportation miscellaneous anything that comes up for you to be able to get all your documents and everything so after you upload all your documents go step by step make sure you don't make any mistake you've done all the forms they want you to fill you have your extra documents you have your admission letter because you would need your letter of admission then you've done your upfront medicals you have that paper with you you upload everything and then you apply so I think that's basically it in a nutshell I, tr I try not to make this video too too long and like I said I have to go soon but um, let me know how it goes I wish you success and I wish you good luck the next video I will give you details on how to type a good SOP that will be the last series in this Canada stuff because I'm even tired of this series to be honest I don't know how these immigration people on YouTube do it but I'm just trying to help and if you're still not convinced you can do it on your own like I said I am an agent and this is my email and my email will be in the description box below as well so feel free to reach out anyway guys so this brings us to the end of this video i know this video started in such a high note and then like i'm just that right now but that's okay that's okay that's fine it's fine it's fine we're good 
leave me recommendations on what you want leave me anything in the description box this is my instagram don't forget to follow me on all social medias please i want to reach 2k you guys like i asked for my you, you, you guys are not nice i asked for you to help me to reach 2k on ig for my birthday and i only got to 1.9 please guys i just need 100 of you to subscribe and get me to 2k i'm trying to i'm trying to be I, like I'm trying to take this thing seriously. I'll be on Snap. I follow me on. Oh, I'm on TikTok, apparently. <laughs> I'm on TikTok now. I'm a TikToker. No, I'm not. Just for fun. So, follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Snapchat. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me everywhere. I don't. You can uh, email me, whatever. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, thank you for loving me. Don't forget to hit the like button. It's free. Just this button like this. Just the thing. Click the thing but please and then click the bell by the side so you can get notified every time I upload because videos are coming back to back. Summer to take over. You get me? So please. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Have a lovely day. Don't forget you are loved, you are valued. You are blessed and you are amazing. You are doing the best you can do right now. You are exactly where you need to be right now. Don't compare yourself. Thank you so much for watching guys and I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye.